Gravitational potential energy turns into kinetic energy But on Earth the transfer is never perfection Because of air resistance and because of friction Work is done against resistive forces Transferring energy to the thermal store Work is done against resistive forces So the object falls less quickly to the floor Hello! In this video, I'm going to go through a really classic GCSE question where you have to work out the gravitational potential energy at the start of a situation and then use the conservation of energy, the idea that energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transferred from one store to another, to find what velocity the object hits the ground at. So this question has lots of different forms. But the idea is always that there'll be some initial gravitational potential energy and then you'll assume that all of that gravitational potential energy turns into kinetic energy. I'm going to show each part of the question for 10 seconds and then I'm going to go through each part. For part A, we're asked to find the change in gravitational potential energy when the miner moves down 15 metres. So for that, we use the gravitational potential energy formula. Gravitational potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. More exactly, that formula is that the change in gravitational potential energy equals the mass times the gravitational field strength times the change in height. So in this question, the mass is 90 kilograms. We're told the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and the change in height is 15 meters. So we can always use our calculator in GCSE physics. So 90 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 15 equals 13,230 joules. For part B, we are asked to find the maximum possible speed that the miner could reach at the bottom of the slide. So for this, we have to assume that all the gravitational potential energy converts to kinetic energy. So we assume that if the gravitational potential energy change was 13,230 joules, we assume that all of that energy turned into kinetic energy, which means the kinetic energy at the bottom will be 13,230 joules. We then use the kinetic energy formula to find that maximum possible speed. So the kinetic energy formula is kinetic energy is half times mass times velocity squared, and we want to find the velocity. So let's rearrange. Firstly, let's multiply both sides by two. So two times the kinetic energy equals the mass times the velocity squared. Let's then divide both sides by m, 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass equals the velocity squared. And finally, to find the velocity, we need to square root both sides. So the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy over the mass equals the velocity. So in this case, our kinetic energy is 13,230. And our mass is 90 kilograms. So we're going to do the square root of 2 times 13,230 divided by 90, and that gives us an answer of 17.1 meters per second. Now that is the maximum speed which the miner could reach at the bottom, where we've assumed that all the gravitational potential energy turns into kinetic energy. In reality, because the miner is moving down a slide, there is air resistance and there is friction. So in reality, not all of the gravitational potential energy will turn into kinetic energy. Some of the gravitational potential energy will transfer to the thermal energy of the slide and of the surroundings. Finally, for part C, 
we are asked to explain why the speed of the miner isn't actually 17.1 meters per second at the bottom of the slide. And this is a really common follow-up question when dealing with the change from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy. And the answer should contain three parts. Firstly, you should use the language that work is done against the resistive forces. In this case, friction and air resistance. Work means energy transferred. So by saying that work is done against the friction and air resistance, we mean that energy is being transferred because the object is having to travel through this force of friction and air resistance. We then say that therefore energy is transferred to the thermal store. But we also need to include where this energy has been transferred to. So the energy has been transferred to the thermal store of the surroundings, of the surrounding air perhaps. It's always very important when talking about wasted energy or about energy lost to the surroundings that you say exactly where it's gone. Uh, two examples that I can think of right now are if there is loss of energy due to resistance in an electrical circuit, you say that work is done against the electrical resistance and therefore energy is transferred to the thermal store of the wires and of the components. And in the case of friction, you can say work is done against friction. So energy is transferred to the thermal store of the ground or of the tires, if it's a car, or in this case of the slide itself. Gravitational potential energy turns into kinetic energy. But on Earth the transfer is never perfection Because of air resistance and because of friction Work is done against resistive forces Transferring energy to the thermal store Work is done against resistive forces So the object falls less quickly to the floor If you have any questions or comments Please comment below uh, please like the video if you liked it uh, and also subscribe because then you'll see any other videos that I post uh, about A-level physics and about GCSE physics. Thank you.